Ever get stuck in that rush hour traffic and just think, man, I wish I could teleport? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're diving into a future today where that might not be so far-fetched. Robotaxes. Could they be the answer? Are they the revolution just waiting to happen? Or I don't know, maybe a roadblock we're going to have to swerve around. We've got a stack of sources to unpack here. Kicking things off, we've got this Clean Technica article. It's taking a look at how all these little autonomous delivery vehicles popping up, you know, like those little robots on the sidewalk, how those might actually be paving the way for, you guessed it, robo taxes. It's a classic pattern, really, when you think about how technology gets adopted. Yeah. Start small, build a bit of trust, you know, through those familiar experiences. It's like dipping your toes in the pool before you do a cannonball into the deep end. And speaking of diving in, this article takes us straight to Texas, yeah. where a company called Cleavon is actually testing out their delivery robots as we speak. Yeah, and they're really smart about it. They're not going all in with like a full-blown robo-taxi fleet right. right off the bat. Yeah. They're easing people in with what are essentially lockers on wheels, mm -hmm. delivering, get this, takeout, even fried chicken. Okay, now that's an image. Fried chicken by robot. But I see what you mean. It makes it less intimidating, right? It's yeah. like, oh, I already use delivery services. This is just a natural progression. Exactly. And psychologically, that's huge. People were all creatures of habit. We like gradual change, building on what we know. Makes that leap to full-on autonomous transportation a little less uh, daunting, maybe? But why Texas? Is it just because, well, everyone seems to be heading there these days? There's that, sure. But mm -hmm. Texas has a reputation, business-friendly. They're really rolling out the red carpet for these kinds of ventures. And they've got that Alliance Texas Mobility Innovation Zone. It's like a playground for testing out all this new transportation tech. You see the pattern, uh. right? These innovation hubs popping up. Back in the day, it was Silicon Valley. Now, Texas wants a slice of that action. These ecosystems, they're crucial for you know, real progress to happen. So is Texas about to become like the unexpected leader in this whole autonomous transportation revolution? It's an interesting thought for sure. But let's shift gears for a second, come back from Texas to, well, something a little closer to home, our cars. We're jumping into this opinion piece that really dives into the emotional side of car ownership, nice. especially with EVs. Yeah, there's a certain allure there, isn't there? It's freedom, independence, that open road. It's powerful. And it's interesting to compare this to other areas where we've seen a shift from owning a thing to yeah. accessing a service. Think music. We used to buy CDs. Now it's all Spotify, streaming services. Right, right. So are we looking at a similar kind of generational divide, but this time it's about cars? Ownership versus access. This article argues that Gen Z, especially, they might be way more open to the idea of robotaxes. They've grown up with ride sharing. It's just part of their world. Convenience, shared solutions, that's their jam. Makes you wonder, though, is it really just a generational thing? Or is it something bigger, a cultural shift? Urbanization, technology, it's all playing a role. It's a good question. It's not just about the tech itself, right? It's about us, how we're changing, what we value. But let's be practical for a second. Sentimentality aside, if robo-taxes are going to win us over, they've got to be affordable. Right. That's where this data analysis comes in. Rethink X and Tesla, they've got some pretty bold predictions about robo-taxi usage and costs. Brace yourself, because they're projecting these robo-taxes could be racking up 90,000 miles a year. 90,000. No. That's a lot of driving. It sounds crazy, I know, but when you break it down, it's not as far-fetched as you might think. I mean, think about it. Robo-taxis, they don't need sleep. They don't take vacations. They can be on the road 24-7. And with battery tech constantly improving a million miles over the lifespan of a vehicle, that's not out of the question anymore. Okay, yeah, the logic tracks. But how does all that translate to actual dollars and cents? Well, with that kind of usage, longer lifespans, the cost per mile, it plummets. We're talking significantly cheaper fares than traditional taxis, so, even with you know profit margin for the robo-taxi companies. So is this the end of owning a car as we know it? Even a low-cost EV? Hold your horses. Huh. There's a catch. It all comes down to efficiency. Remember those massive miles we talked about? Mm. If they're just driving around empty, it all falls apart. Mm -hmm, Optimizing mm -hmm. routes, minimizing downtime, that's going to be absolutely make or break for the economics of this whole thing. Right. Those empty miles could really come back to bite them. Efficiency is key. Yeah, empty miles would definitely throw a wrench in the whole thing. Speaking of efficiency, though, we got to talk about Tesla. They're kind of like the elephant in the room, right? Every conversation about electric vehicles and, by extension, robo-taxes always seems to circle back to them. This data analysis we're looking at, it suggests Tesla could be huge in this market. 
but it also hints that they might not be alone at the top forever. So what makes Tesla such a big deal in this whole robo-taxi game? Well, it starts with their whole philosophy, their approach to how they build their vehicles. Mm -hmm. Tesla's obsessed with efficiency, squeezing every last mile out of charge, uh -huh. and they're building their cars to last. Remember those million-mile lifespans we were talking about? That's what they're aiming for. So more than just being electric, they're building, like, the robo-taxi equivalent of a marathon runner. All about going the distance. But what about the brains of the operation, the actual tech that's doing the driving? Right, the autonomous driving system. Tesla's all in on what's called a vision-based system. Basically, they're using cameras and artificial intelligence to navigate the world. So like a human driver relying on their eyes to see what's around them. Exactly. Whereas some of their competitors are using a different approach. They're relying on LiDAR, which is like radar but with lasers. It creates a very detailed 3D map of the environment. So it's like having a super high-tech map versus just using your eyes. That's a pretty big difference. It is, and there's a lot of debate about which approach is better. Tesla's betting big on vision and AI, saying it'll be more flexible, more adaptable in the long run. It's a bold strategy, that's for sure. But even with a head start, can Tesla really hold off all the competition? Well, Tesla's got a couple of advantages right now. They're mapping data, for one, they're way ahead there, and something called geofencing, which is basically setting up virtual boundaries where the robo-taxis can operate. Those are hurdles for other companies trying to catch up. So they're like the first ones to stake their claim in this new world. In a way, yes. But these are not insurmountable obstacles for their competitors. There's a ton of money pouring into this sector and some really brilliant minds working on it. It's a race to the future, and Tesla's just out in front right now. Okay, so let's say, just for a moment, that robo-taxis do take over the world. We're not just talking about a new way to hail a cab, right? This is potentially transforming our cities, our lives. The ripple effects could be huge. Think about it. Less need for parking lots. That's a big one. Suddenly, you've got space to reclaim, more green spaces in cities, maybe even more affordable housing. More parks, less concrete jungle. That's a future I could get behind. But what about public transportation? How would that fit into this robo-taxi-filled world? I think they could actually work really well together, yeah. especially when it comes to what's called the last mile problem. You know, you take the train or subway most of the way, but then you still need to get from the station to your final destination. Right, that last little bit can sometimes be the most frustrating part. Exactly. But imagine a robo-taxi waiting for you when you get off the train. It takes you that last mile quickly and easily. Seamless, efficient, the best of both worlds. Exactly. So it's not just about replacing cars entirely. It's about creating a smarter, more integrated transportation system. And once you have a system like that in place, it could really change how we think about where we live. Absolutely. If getting around becomes ultra convenient and affordable, suddenly that long commute doesn't seem so bad. Right. You're no longer tethered to living right downtown just to avoid traffic. Exactly. It could give people more freedom, more flexibility in choosing where they want to live. We could see a resurgence of those smaller communities, a revitalization of areas that haven't always been well served by traditional transportation. It's exciting to think about the possibilities. Robo-taxis, they're not just about getting from point A to point B. Yeah. They're potentially a catalyst for a whole lot more. It's um, a lot to wrap our heads around, isn't it? It really is. And it all goes back to this fundamental shift we're seeing, not just with cars but in so many areas of our lives. Right, like we were saying earlier with music. Exactly. We've gone from owning CDs to streaming services. Mm -hmm. And robo-taxes, this could be the next big one. Moving from owning a car to accessing transportation as a service on demand. And the potential impact on, well, everything. It's huge. Bigger than we can probably even imagine right now. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a shift that could be even more profound than, say, the move from horses to cars back in the day. Wow. Yeah. It's mind-blowing when you put it like that. And to think we started this whole conversation with those little delivery robots puttering around Texas. Right. Cleavon, those guys are on to something. Uh -huh. They understand that bringing new technology to the masses, it's about building trust, meeting people where they are. Easing them in, those baby steps toward autonomy. And then we went from those little robots all the way to Tesla. With those eye-popping projections from Rethink X about how much these robo-taxis could drive, the cost savings. 90,000 miles a year, it still blows my mind. And it all hinges on that efficiency, right? Yeah. Maximizing those driven miles, minimizing downtime, that's the key to making the economics work. Those empty miles will come back to haunt you, that's for sure. But here's the thing, and I think this is the biggest takeaway for me. 
None of this happens without us. We, the drivers, the riders, the consumers, we're the ones who ultimately decide if this robo-taxi revolution takes off or crashes and burns. We get to vote with our wallets, essentially. Are we ready to embrace this new world, this shift away from car ownership as we know it? Or are we clinging to our steering wheels for dear life? It's a choice we all have to make, and it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. It will be, and I think there's a real opportunity here to create a better future. Mm. Cleaner, more efficient, more equitable. A future without traffic jams. <laughs> now that's a future I can get behind. So as we wrap up here, I want to leave you with this image. It's Friday afternoon. You're done with work for the week, ready for a weekend getaway. But instead of battling traffic, you open an app on your phone. A few taps later, a robo-taxi pulls up. Quiet, sleek, ready to whisk you away. Does that thought fill you with excitement or anxiety? That's the question we all have to answer for ourselves. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of robo-taxes. We'll be back next with another deep dive into the future of tech. Until then, drive safe or maybe let the robots do the driving.